you're not going to find very often a 7-1 kid with agility, with skill, and some toughness. You're going to hear a lot of people who Dragon Bender and Chris Dapps posing this in the same discussion. The Phoenix Suns select Dragon Bender. Bender has been unable to adjust. Bender has been a non-factor for his entire career so far. The emergence of stretch bigs has one of the biggest changes that the sport has ever seen. And it's no wonder why either. The value of big guys who can space the floor has translated to some of the most productive offenses in basketball history. This wave of big guys, with an unbelievable mix of size and skill, has drawn fascination from critics and fans alike. The ceiling for a guy like this is seemingly endless, and at one point in time, Dragon Bender was the next unicorn. A late bloomer who developed a guard-like skill set before shooting up over 7 feet tall is one interesting prospect. The rise of Dragon Bender seemed pretty incredible. A big guy who was stroking a three ball while facilitating and handling the ball better than guards years older than him was quite the feat, and made the quick collapse of his NBA career even more puzzling. To reach a height like this is quite the achievement, but with today's video sponsor Factor, it'll be a whole lot easier. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Up around 550 calories or less making your summer cut a whole lot simpler. The Protein Plus Meals also comes in clutch when you're trying to make some gains, with their Protein Plus Pack containing more than 30 grams of protein per serving. Factor has been great for me reaching my fitness, athletic, and dietary goals for a fraction of the price. Cutting down on my time cooking has also been great for clearing up time to make more videos like the one you're watching right now. To get in on this awesome deal, go to factor75.com or click the top link in the description and use code SWISH50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Make sure you check out Factor and a big thank you for sponsoring today's video. Dragan Bender was born in Bosnia before moving to Croatia shortly after and spending his childhood there. His brother was a hell of a player in his own right and seemingly dragged Bender into the sport. Early on, he got the short end of the stick playing against older competition that were his brother's friends, but that certainly didn't last for long. Bender was a standout star very early on, but basketball opportunities are not as plentiful overseas as we see in the States, so like other European stars, he had to bounce out of his hometown at just 12 years old. Moving to split Croatia to attend an academy of a Croatian legend in the Euroleagues in Nikola Vujicic, this is where Bender's basketball career would change forever. He truly excelled and connected with Vujicic and his training program. He became his trainer and even his guardian in the future as his career progressed. At this time, he wasn't the 7 foot giant that we know, and he was actually running the point guard. This built his game in a unique but immensely valuable way. Bender was an incredibly versatile player, and as he continued to get taller and taller, this became more and more valuable. He was obviously far beyond his years as he began to play professional basketball at just 15 years old, playing in the KK Split League. This league's pretty competitive, no doubt about it, and has produced NBA talent before. Croatian legend Tony Kukoc once donned the same jersey. Kukoc was Bender's guy, similar to many Croatian kids, and Bender molded his game after him. He's mostly known for his role alongside Michael Jordan, and had an extremely interesting and versatile skill set that he didn't get to show off as much due to the talents around him. But in Croatia, they knew this guy's game pretty damn well. It's safe to say that Bender recreated this pretty well, as over the next two years playing in Croatia, he began to garner some attention as the next phenom. At this point, he was a giant 6 foot 11, 16 year old power forward who showed some incredible natural feel for the game. Dragon had a pretty damn solid handle for a guy his size, a noticeably quick and a really smooth jump shot, with the willingness to pull shots off the bounce and beyond the three point line as well, and a very, very solid ability to facilitate for teammates. Bender's talents were put on display in the 2014 FIBA U18 tournament. This is when Bender really began to blow up. He had himself one hell of a run, with performances including a 34-14-2 game with two blocks and two steals, as well as a 21-17-9 and 14-10-9 performance. Scouts were calling his game unlike anything that's ever been displayed in the tournament's history. He had some attention prior, due to his length and pretty polished skills for his size, but holy did this guy show up. 
This put him on the NBA's radar, I mean a 7-footer ranking 3rd in assists with a 2.9 to 1 assist to turnover ratio, I mean what the hell man. Bender signed on to an Israeli second tier Euroleague team where he continued to show off some versatility. 10 a game with at least a willingness to shoot the 3 ball, although not the most efficient out there. His play was good enough to earn him a spot on the primary team the following year, and similar to other stories like his, the Euroleague doesn't just hand out minutes to young guys willingly. Bender's role was not really very big, but I mean for a 17 year old playing against grown men, he showed a lot of potential. His stats don't necessarily jump out at you, but the NBA attention was rolling in from scouts. Bender was a lock of a lottery pick, and as it got closer to draft time, Bender was inching his way to the top of the draft boards. Going into the draft, it's safe to say that it wasn't the most hyped pool outside of Ingram and Simmons, and for that reason, Bender didn't have the hype and expectations that you would usually see for a guy expected to go top 5 and especially a dude all big like himself. His draft profile was pretty interesting. A 7'4 who can guard some 3s to maybe some 5s was impressive. Like I said before, his passing was actually pretty unbelievable at times. His years playing point guard turned him into a legit point forward. He was known to dish well as a pick and roll ball handler at times, and as a 7 footer, I mean that can turn into a real dynamic offense with the right coach and system in place. The biggest draw however was in that buttery jump shot, and 37.5% from deep was pretty sweet. He drew on a lot of comparisons to Chris Stops, and although that comparison was just absolutely garbage, he was coming in the league at a time where Towns and Porzingis were looking like the next big things, and Bender was truly the next guy up. That being said, the cons were also definitely there. The biggest question mark I see with him was that he kinda was underscouted. I get Euroleague guys often are, but there wasn't very many quality assessments of his game. There was a lot of chatter about what he could be, but less so about what he was right now, and truly, he was not very NBA ready. He lacked explosiveness, I mean his vert was under 2 feet, and he wasn't the quickest guy for a guy that was noticeably weak. Guard-like skills on a big guy are super attractive qualities, but don't do you much good unless you have the ability to play at the 4 spot. For this reason, Dragon Bender was definitely a project pick, but I understand the upside. He didn't have the potential to be an offensive force that would take over the game, but he could be a stretch big who can facilitate well out of the high post, kickstart fast breaks with outlet bombs, and create advantages off the bounce against bigs who aren't too comfortable guarding on the perimeter. Bender was realistically too raw to be as high as he was in the draft boards. He had flashes in the Euro League of high potential, but he wasn't really that proven to where I would want to gamble on him, but the Phoenix Suns were looking for a floor spacer after striking big on D-Book the prior year. I think the fear of missing out got to them a bit, but as a very very bad team at this time, they chose to gamble. A gamble it certainly was, uh, yeah, his, his rookie year wasn't any good. In 13 minutes a game, he was just really bad, man. Rookie years are a time to just figure out what's up in the NBA, but uh, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't many upsides in his play, it was, it was really bad. The buttery jump shot didn't translate, teammates said he was notably timid, and for that reason, this was probably why he shot 27% from deep and 35% from the field. He wasn't willing to attack the basket much at all. His frame couldn't keep up with fours offensively or defensively. I'd like to point to positives with his game, but after one year, even Suns fans called him a bust. He said before that he looks at himself as a stretch big, and as more than half of his shots came from deep, he's definitely right in that. But he even said when he's not knocking down shots, he's not worth having out there because he doesn't do much else at all. Bender is probably just not going to be able to be a 4 in the NBA. He wasn't strong enough and he couldn't finish inside at all. After one year, no one really talked about this guy much at all. The way I see him being able to find a place in the league is if he can knock down the 3 ball efficiently and defend 3s or 4s. Realistically that's probably enough to at least get you past your rookie deal. I will give Bender credit his sophomore season, despite getting pretty much entirely hate and criticism, he was generally written off as a bust, but still improved his play. His minutes jumped from 13 to 25 this year, and he definitely had a much better season due to his improved shooting. 36% from deep is pretty good, and he had more signs this year than we ever saw in his rookie year. I know that's not saying a whole lot, but in an 11 game stretch in February, Bender jumped up to 10 a game on pretty good splits. 42% from 3 is actually pretty phenomenal. This small sample size definitely drove some hope that maybe Bender was actually a decent player, and the scouts didn't just completely screw this one up. 
but this sadly is where the positives end for Bender's run on the Suns. The following year, his jump shot just fell off a cliff, man. I'm not sure why he was so consistent out there, but when he's not hitting threes, you notice that he's just a four who can't rebound, won't attack the basket, barely gets to the line, and when he does, he shoots under 60%. He's pretty talented, but it looks like the NBA was just out of his ballpark physically. The Suns had no interest in him after this point, and I'm sure not a ton of other teams did either. Bender landed a minor role with the best team in the East on the Milwaukee Bucks with a two-year contract. I'm not sure whether he had a ton of value on the market, but I've heard other people critiquing this decision, saying that he should have went to a tanking team. He likely could have played a bigger role and had a chance to prove himself, but it's not what happened. The Bucks sent him to the G League and waived him before landing himself in Golden State on a 10-day contract. If this were to happen at the start of the year, this might be a different story, because he proved to be decent on the Warriors despite being bounced around the league. Unfortunately, his run was cut short due to the pandemic, and Bender did not touch an NBA floor ever again after a quick four-year run in the NBA. I think Dragon Bender was somewhat of a casualty in the rise of stretch bigs. Bender was overhyped greatly, I think that's pretty clear at this point, and the rise of guys like Porzingis put Bender in a situation where he shouldn't have been in at all. I mean, even in Croatia, it seemed like a lot of guys were surprised just how highly he was regarded in the eyes of NBA scouts. In most years drafts, he's probably not looked at as the next European sensation or anything close to that. Some guys don't blend well at the highest level, and Bender's clearly one of those guys. Hopefully he finds some success overseas, and the possibility of a return as a vet in the league, I guess, is still there. Maybe we'll see him again, or maybe he's just an addition to the list of all-time draft busts. All I know to this point is that this is the Dragon Bender story. Thank you for watching, and peace out.